Welcome to Factor Theory Live. I'm Steve Crawford. Bob Lazar may be many things, but he is not a liar. I watched him recently on a Joe Rogan podcast, uh, the Joe Rogan Experience, I think it's called. And he was there with the producer, or yeah, the producer, director, editor of the movie, documentary movie, Bob Lazar. Area 51 and Flying Saucers and uh, that's available on Netflix you can check that out and but he on this podcast for Joe Rogan on YouTube he brought up things that weren't mentioned in that documentary and things that I've never heard Bob say before so that was pretty much what got me to go just wow I had to stop and uh, pop up my Bandicam and record that clip because I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Um, then they get into Tesla and Joe tries to say it was Westinghouse that stopped Tesla. It was J.P. Morgan, but I digress. Anyway, check out this clip of Bob Lazar on the Joe Rogan podcast. Let me know what you think because I've been hassled for a long time for doing time travel shows. And here's Bob Lazar who has pretty much been proven right with Element 115 and uh, other things that he has said about his education and where he worked that were proven and the fact that he passed four, four lie detector tests. Four. So check this out. Could should, be. You should tell him some of the stuff that you read that you don't know is true. I mean, if the, the stuff was true about the propulsion stuff, I mean, anyway. He, well, what have you read? What, what, well, you, what read? you saw, too. I mean, you know what are you talking about he, spill the beans bob <laughs> <laughs> i gotta poke the bear here a little get bit. some more yeah. liquor in you the um well i mean it, it, the again the the only thing i could verify was what i had my hands on um there were you know there was talk of weapon systems that there were different projects project galileo project sidekick was supposed to be weapon applications of the craft um Project Looking Glass had to do with time, any effects of time in the craft. Now, I don't think we're not talking about making a time machine like in science fiction, but we're talking about, you know, small distortions, intentional distortions of time and how that can be used, you know, as a, uh, not as a, well, it was part of a weapon program. Now, how are you informed in this? About These, this? again, were just the small briefings that I read. But, Again, I don't really like to talk about those because I don't have any information on them, and it was just, you know, small right. briefings. But you told Commander Fravor that what he saw might have been a time dilation and not it, it, Well, it could be, propulsion. because yeah. gravity affects time, you know, space-time. Yes. I'm sure you've heard of that. And, um, you know, what, what Commander Fravor saw as he was in the F-18 approaching it, he said it, he described it as a... Uh, ping pong ball in a cup and shaking it back and forth. It was moving that fast. Now, obviously, if there's anything inside there, it it's going to be battered to hell. But you know, my point was was that well, one of two things: either there's a gravitational envelope in there which negates any inertia effects, or you are seeing through a gravity distortion field. So you know, just like you're looking at a a hot highway and mm -hmm. you see you know, like an water. optical distortion right. going through there. Well, the same thing happens in gravity, and the craft may not actually be moving like that. It may just look like it, uh. because you're seeing, you, you can only see it through the field. So it may be making much more gentle moves. I'm not saying that's it, but it has to be one of the two. And the thing shows up 60 miles away. They noticed it on radar. 60 seconds after it left Commander Fravor, but it was at his cap point, which is the next point he was destined to go to, 60 miles away. And in 60 seconds on radar, the same object ends up there. So it's going a mile a second. No, they, the, I think the radar just picked it up in 60 seconds. Yeah, we, it could have been there instantly, but he, yeah, uh, we don't know. The oh, cycle time. Nobody on the radio knows. That, that's the whole thing. Is oh, so it cycles like radar cycles. Like yeah, it, sends it, it out doesn't. A beam it doesn't sweep, but right, I mean, it, like it, it turn, scans. Like, yeah, it, like it's a planar antenna. array, so okay. it just you know it scans around it at random places. That's the spy one. Does the really cool. 
Yeah, it right. doesn't do the whole loop anymore. Right. Do the point. Uh, the point is, though, that the craft moved to his next location before he knew where his next location was going to be. Jesus. And that's, I mean, that's documented. well documented. So that's uh, that's a pretty shocking piece of information. What's fascinating to me too is that you were discussing this, um, the the way this reactor worked, and that these things were not really connected. No, nothing is connected. There's no wiring at all. That freaks me the fuck out. Charge your iPhone, you know. Yeah, like, well, wireless. On the little, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the uh, that's a well, simple I mean, electromagnetic. Tesla. Yeah, I know. Again, but that's just simple electromagnetic induction. Right, it's, but I mean, Tesla, the scientist, had this concept of uh, right. That's, send, that's what he's, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm talking. I mean, about. for other yeah. people that don't know what we're saying, he wanted to send wireless electricity through the sky, and Westinghouse was like, "Get the fuck out of here with that!" Like when anybody could just pull electricity out of the sky. Can't meter. Yeah, they couldn't. Yeah. They couldn't. We meter had this talk of the yeah. car right over and trying to chill him out. You know, we're talking about Tesla and how he, you know, he couldn't be metered and how it all went down. So it's funny you bring it up. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that that I mean, who knows what would have happened in terms of innovation yeah. had he been allowed to go forward with that? Well, we probably wouldn't have computers. You think? Yeah, I'm pretty positive. Why I mean, that? forget about microelectronics. Well, this is dumping huge amounts of electromagnetic energy in the air. And yeah, we'd be able to wirelessly turn on our lights, but there'd be no radio communication. The interference would be something we could would be overwhelming. It would induce electric currents in anything with a small wire on it. So integrated circuits, transistors would be disintegrated before they were even, you know, tested for operation. So it, it would... It would Maybe destroy. it would have fucked us up. Yeah, it would have stopped us dead. We'd have, it'd be great. You can turn lighters on and heaters from all over the place with no wires, but it would stop modern electronics. And if we became dependent on it, it would almost be like our dependence on fossil fuels. Although it's destructive, it's very difficult for us to get off the nipple. It would have changed the course of how we developed, which is so interesting when you talk about if a civilization, another star system, didn't even start with fossil fuels. They had 115 naturally on their planet, and they're like, cool, anti-gravity is pretty awesome. Well, the fact that they I didn't I think it's important that that actually happened. Yeah. It might have been stopped in its tracks for a reason. Whoa. Okay, so at the end there, they're talking about Tesla, and Bob is theor theorizing he's acting like it was fact but he was theorizing that it would have changed uh, we wouldn't have computers and stuff I think all that stuff still could have happened and we're talking about a hundred years ago they would have figured out a way to to do some sort of shielding or make ti a small unit that's attached or comes attached to each device so it powers that device specifically there are all kinds of ways that that could be challenged and and overcome and we would be living a star trek life change us into the vortex you know instead of this mass hallucination that that's being put over us that look in the skies look just the, our water everything it's disgusting they're trying to make us think we have to live this way and we don't just because people don't want to give up a few creature comforts I'm here to tell you you won't have to or at least not permanently just until the new service or, or devices are created you know you're gonna want them anyway as soon as the net newest cell phone comes out you take off and you head out and grab one right well this would just be the same thing your device current device would become obsolete and you'd be upgrading to something you would never need to charge and it would not emit the, the radiation that these things that we have right now do emit there are safe frequencies Tesla was the one who figured them out so we really, really need to give our heads a shake. This could be a whole, you know, we're, we're told we have to work our asses off every day just to enjoy a little bit of something. If we, most of us have to work two jobs or more, you know, just to, 
to get by. Some of us can't even do that anymore. Some of us are disabled now because we had jobs and the bosses took advantage of us and we wound up in accidents or having a serious injury and then let go. I was personally cut off a workman's comp and it's just convenient. They, they said that I should be on it for life, but for some reason they were cutting me off. And it made sense that my former boss, his brother, was a member of parliament here in Canada. So he put in the call to his, bro uh, to his brother and, and said, hey, this guy's going to be sucking off our teeth for the rest of his life through workman's comp. Can you do something about it? I mean, there's no other explanation. Workman's comp was going to keep me on, right? So these are the things, the mass delusions, okay? That, that's, that's what it is. It's a mass delusion. Things we're being told to believe that are just outright wrong. And I'm hoping to get into these, even in the more spiritual sense, you will see there's another show you should check out of Joe's podcast where he takes uh, ayahuasca, I believe is how it's pronounced, or mushrooms or something, something to put himself into an induced state of uh, super being, I guess you could call it, an altered consciousness. And the things he sees are incredible. And I postulate, if that's the right word, because my brain's been mush lately, but that, that's something that I, I think when we're dosed as babies, that puts a, a stop to it, you know? But, like, yes, there are some vaccinations we may need, but that still doesn't account for the, the side effects of, of those. And the side effect being we are, cre we are cut off from source these and they love that they don't want us knowing the true reality of everything that's out there they just don't and if we were not chemicaled up and poisoned and that's how re resilient we are they've had to step up their game big time heavy doses with the spring um more more earthquakes the the new nuclear facility fukushima that did not go away people that's still spilling into the ocean so they're and and look back to the days where they first started their nuclear testing over a thousand nuclear detonations in our atmosphere and or underground you cannot think that that does not have an effect on our environment long term long term and they're stepping it up because that's how resilient we are our bodies are adapting to it and it's maybe silly to say and think but as a smoker I noticed a lot of people who don't smoke cigarettes get sick a lot or coughing a lot my daughter's among them and I see clips saying that singers are losing their voices and it makes sense to me that it would be because of all of this aluminum and barium and there's something else. I can't remember the third chemical. These are things that are not supposed to be in our system. That they're spraying in our air. It's getting in our food. It's getting in our water. It gets in our air. Even now, as a smoker, I still get a bit of a raspy voice going. You go, well, that's the cigarettes. And I go, well, how come I don't get sick? It's because of smokers, because we already smoke something we shouldn't be that we're already taking in poison the stuff they're spraying in the air isn't affecting us as quickly as they would like it to at least that's one of my theories what do you think i'm steve crawford factor theory live have you had this idea about the robin hood banker's tax yes it's a sweet little idea taxing the banks to help the poor, but I, I don't think it'll work. It's very complicated and would be very tough on the banking sector. Which has just been given billions of pounds of taxpayers' money to keep it going. Well, yeah, of course. And is still paying itself billions of pounds in bonuses. Yes. So the tax is a charge on all bank transactions that don't include members of the public. Bonds, derivatives, currency, speculative stuff. Is that right? Yeah, something like that. Very complex. So the bankers would give how much from each deal they do? Um, 25%? <laughs> well, no, not that much. 10%? No. 5%? No, not 5 More or less? Slightly less. What, 1%? 
Not quite. Half of 1%? No. A tenth of a percent? No. Half of that? They'd give around 0.05% of every deal? Yeah, that's about right. And sometimes it'd be even less. That doesn't sound like a lot to most people. No. I can see that. And how much would it raise to, to help people at home and abroad? Oh, a fair amount, I believe. About a million pounds a year? <laughs> no, more than that. 100 million pounds? Uh, more. 500 million pounds? Um, well, um... A billion pounds a year? Uh, no, it's slightly more than that, I'm told. 10 billion pounds? More. 50 billion pounds? Yeah, that sounds about right. In fact, I believe it's likely to be more than 100 billion pounds. Could be double that. Could be more than double. Um, yeah, uh, um, possibly. Uh... Right, so let me get this clear. A tiny tax on the banks could raise billions of pounds every year to help save lives in the poorest countries, fund crucial action against climate change around the world, and help avoid cuts to crucial public services in this country. Gosh. Well, yeah. Um, that, that is about the, um, um, sum of it. I, d I don't know. P perhaps it's, um, quite a good idea. If I lay here just lay here